Hey guys, what's up? It's Iplan here and welcome to episode 2 of my Warframe the beginner player experience sort of guide series. This is play session number 2 for me. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, I couldn't sleep and all I could think about was making this video and making progress on this account. So we are here. So what we're going to be talking about in today's video is basically about some of the stuff that we unlocked because of what we did in the previous episode, what we need to do to move forward and also a little bit about modding so if you come up to the front of your ship to navigation here and you take a seat it's going to zoom you right into earth and what you'll notice is that you have a few nodes that are flashing blue so if you hover over the venus junction it's going to show you the challenges that you need to complete to get from earth to venus and actually go into the venus junction to kill the boss there so you can move on to venus so we've already completed one of the challenges and that's to complete the Vor's prize quest up next we have to complete the quest size vigil and then we need to use fusion to rank up any mod once we complete those challenges we're going to get all the rewards that you can see at the bottom and those are some pretty good rewards now if you've played warframe before or you watched any of my other uh guide videos or something like that you're going to notice that this has changed this has been made a lot easier and the rewards are a lot better but before we talk about any of the star chart progression i want to quickly mention the circuit now the circuit is a game mode that we unlocked by completing the the very paradox quest and if you come up here to the top right and click this face icon, it might be a different color for you. But what's going to happen is you're going to be able to choose between these three game modes. Now, the Daviri experience is basically what you played in the Daviri Paradox quest, except you can run around as your drifter and pick up resources, which you're going to use way later on in the game. Or you can take part in the circuit. So once you press the circuit, what's going to happen is it's going to show you three different warframes now these are warframes that you probably don't have if you're just starting the game out but basically this is a weekly game mode where you're going to be making progress towards getting one of these free frames so like i said this resets on a weekly basis for me it is thursday so i have until midnight on sunday to complete everything that i need to do in the circuit to get whichever frame that i choose here then once monday rolls around that the selection of frames is going to be different the selections of frames are separated into different weeks what you're seeing on the screen right now this is week six and what i'm going to do is i'm going to throw up on the screen basically every single week and we're going to talk about which frame is the best choice for every week in the circuit so if you you know happen to bring up the circuit as you're watching this video if you're following along and you see like a selection of frames and you're unsure what to pick we're going to cover that right now so you know what frame to pick so for week one we have to choose between excalibur trinity and ember and this is a pretty easy choice in my opinion you're going to go ahead and pick trinity now while trinity isn't the most effective frame in in the game she is quite annoying to farm so by choosing trinity for the circuit you've got a weak time frame to farm her in a quite easy way instead of having to go through the hassle of farming up keys and stuff later on to fight the boss together so you can just straight up get trinity and she is an okay frame don't get me wrong she's just not like really the best at anything but uh if you can pick her up get her out of the way that's a really good thing. Week number two, we have the choice between Loki, Mag, and Rhino. Mag and Rhino, you can acquire quite early. So I would honestly say go for Loki. On top of that, Loki really isn't the best frame in the game. And as you level up new Warframes and weapons, you're going to increase your mastery rank, which is basically your account rank. So because Loki is more of a not the best frame it's a good thing to get your hands on him as early as possible and then level him from 0 to 30 as quickly as you can to get the mastery from him so then if you don't like him you can get rid of him and open up a warframe slot for yourself week number three we have ash frost and nyx now i would say that you want to pick up ash for the simple fact that you get ash's parts from railjack missions which is an entirely different game mode where you have to build your own spaceship it's kind of its own sort of i Islands, so you're only going to really be playing it to complete like real jack missions that you need to do you're not really going to be investing too heavily into it if you're not a super hardcore warframe player and because of that you're not going to come across ash parts as frequently so picking up ash from the circuit is probably a good thing week number four we have the choice between Saren, Vobin, and nova so Saren is one of the last frames that you get from the star chart and you have to 
get some points to be able to fight the boss that drops her parts. She is an extremely good frame, so if you can get her from your circuit runs, definitely get her. Bobbin you get from Nightweave, which is basically Warframe's like uh, free battle pass, so you don't have to worry too much about that. And Nova you get from a pretty early boss, so definitely if you're on week four, get Saren. Week number five, we have the choice between Necros, Valkyr, and Oberon. Now, I would say get Oberon for the exact same reason as Ash because his parts drop from Realjack missions now. Necros and Valkyr are pretty good. Necros would be better than Valkyr in my opinion because Necros uh, basically rerolls bodies for more loot so that is really helpful as an early game player. Valkyr has a very high armor value so if you're struggling staying alive she's pretty good but Necros and Valkyr you can get pretty early on so definitely pick up Oberon. He's one of the weaker frames in the game but because of that, again, it's better to get him as early as possible, level him from 0 to 30, and then get rid of him. So then you have the mastery rank XP from leveling that frame. Moving on to week number 6, which is the week that I got, unfortunately. This is probably one of the worst weeks to get in your circuit, because all of these frames are quite easy to get. Mirage and Limbo you get from completing quests, and Hydroid you can get from, in my opinion, quite an easy boss. So it doesn't really matter what you choose here, just don't choose Limbo. The benefits of picking hydroid is that he is a good frame he can apply like good like status effects to bad guys and he's just pretty tanky you can also make a build where his kraken is going to make enemies drop additional loot so that's a good build but then mirage she's very strong whenever it comes to just buffing up the damage of your weapons but she's quite squishy she's like a glass cannon but uh, one of her abilities does actually counteract the whole fact that she's like a glass cannon you just have to sacrifice a decent bit of the damage buffing potential that she has to become uh, more tanky so basically you just go full glass cannon on this frame and you're going to be killing everything in the game so it's between hydroid and mirage in all honesty i think i'm going to go for mirage just because i want to be able to deal additional damage actually you know what i've changed my mind i'm going to go for hydroid simply because i just don't want to waste the extra time farming the boss so i'm picking hydroid week number seven we've got the choice between mesa Chroma and Atlas. Now, Mesa is an extremely strong Warframe. She's like an A or an S tier Warframe if you're looking at a tier list. Chroma is on the lower end of a tier list. And in my opinion, I would say Atlas is on the lower end of a tier list as well. The problem with week seven is that Chroma and Atlas are both kind of a pain in the butt to get because Atlas requires you to do a specific type of like space mission. And then Chroma, you have to go around and get different parts for different Warframes to craft them. Mace is probably the most annoying out of the free to farm because you have to go out of your way to get keys to fight a certain boss. So because Mesa is so good and farming her is quite annoying, definitely pick up Mesa here and hold on to her for a little bit because she's going to make a lot of content really easy. Week number eight, really, you could choose any of these frames. I wouldn't choose Ivara though because you get her parts from spy missions, which are quite easy. But if you struggle with spy missions, maybe worth considering picking up Ivara this way. And Naros you get from his quest, so I wouldn't bother with him. And in my opinion, he's not the greatest frame in the world anyway. But then Titania, you get her from her own quest and she is a very efficient frame she can get missions done very fast and is very effective so week number eight i would always be picking titania plus on top of that the augment that you get because you do get additional rewards from this game mode as well for titania is the best augment for her so in my opinion week number eight titania no brainer week number nine another no brainer just pick octavia because the octavia farm can be quite annoying Haro isn't worth it, Nidus isn't worth it, that's just how it is, pick up Octavia, the augment doesn't really matter too much, but Octavia is an S tier Warframe, she makes every single mission extremely easy. Week number 10, you've got the choice between Gara, Korra, and Revenant, now Gara and Korra both take a lot of investment to make good Gara has very high scaling damage and one of her abilities you can take it and put it onto other frames. It's quite versatile that way, but you have to sacrifice the frame. That being said, Gara is extremely easy to farm, so I don't recommend picking up Gara from the circuit for that reason. Korra is also, you know, a frame that takes a heavy investment. 
Um, she's not too difficult to build, but you need to throw mods onto your melee weapon in a certain way to make her first ability deal a lot of damage. If you want a frame that is just good from week number 10, although he is easy to farm up, you can go for Revenant, but all of these frames in week number 10 are easy to farm. So in my opinion, it's a choice between Korra and Revenant, but I'm heavily leaning more towards Revenant because he's extremely tanky and uh, one of his abilities just makes killing a ton of enemies or just one-shotting high-level enemies extremely easy. So definitely, in my opinion, pick up Revenant. Week number 11, we've got the choice between Garuda, Baruch, and and Hildren. Now all of these frames you get from the same area and it's down to you which one you choose. If I was making the decision right now I would be picking Hildren because one of Hildren's abilities you can take it and you can put it onto other Warframes via a certain system that's in the game and uh, it's just a really good ability to have. So I would be taking Hildren, leveling her from 0 to 30 and then I would be getting rid of her to get the ability to throw on other frames to make them more effective but then if i've already done that I would, it's like easy choice between baruch or garuda for me i would be picking garuda as a frame to play and then baruch is kind of just like a nice to have he's very fun he's very strong but in my opinion, Garuda is a little bit more versatile. She's quicker, all that there type of stuff. And she doesn't take as much investment as Baruch to sort of get going. So that's it. Once you hit week 12, it's going to reset back to week one. And then you've got the choice between Excalibur, Trinity and Ember again. And it's down to you which frame you want to pick. But if we go back to my actual screen here, what you're going to see is we have all of these different reward tiers. So one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So whenever I get enough XP to fill up number 1, I'm going to get Loot Detector. Then we move on to number 2. Again, enough XP for that. I'm going to get the Hydroid Neuroptics Blueprint. So I craft that in my foundry. Then moving on, uh, number 5, I'm going to get his chassis. So i got to craft that. Number 8, I get the systems. I have to craft that. And then finally, number 10, I'm going to get the Blueprint, which is going to allow me to put the Neuroptics chassis and the systems together to get my frame after 72 hours so these basically all take uh, 24 hours to craft and then an additional 72 to actually put the frame together and then i've got my hydroid frame able to claim in my inventory implying i have uh the spare slots to actually uh teeing him from my foundry and like i said as well whenever you do the circuit the normal version of it you're going to get an augment for the frame that you're getting so this is the viral tempest augment and this is for hydroid's first ability which is going to apply viral status effects to the bad guys which is a very strong status type in the game which is going to take uh, his first ability from being kind of okay to really 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 strong so if we go ahead and we press begin circuit i'll show you guys what this game mode actually plays like so i'm sure you guys remember this guy you're gonna be thrown in and you're gonna be able to choose between uh three different frames to begin with now you can pick any frame you want here because the game is gonna give you builds that is gonna make the frame strong so as you can see like i have a full build here for mag i don't even own mag and i'm able to play her and uh see him for vault like if i go over to my vault full build here i can see my own build right so what we put on in the last video but here's a full build which is going to make my vault a lot stronger and then moving on we've got frost here with another full build so you can use this uh, game mode as an opportunity to try out frames that you find interesting implying they're sitting on this pedestal and on top of that you should match make into this game mode so you have buddies to sort of help you out because the longer you survive in this game mode the more xp you're gonna get and the more xp you get then the more progress you make towards uh, getting your new frame now i think you can earn like xp towards your actual warframe so if you've got like your starter frame in here i recommend going for that and then just using the build that they give you and then next up you have to choose a weapon or a few weapons right so you got to pick up a primary a secondary and a melee so i have the tiburon as my primary so you've only got one option for that from the get-go so just go ahead and pick that up uh, we've got a dex nakana which i've got that in my inventory and we have a nell so you've got two melee choices a primary choice 
add a secondary choice. And then if you run over here, you can actually spend the intrinsics that you got from that Daviri Paradox quest, or if you play the Daviri Experience game mode, you can go ahead and spend them here. I recommend investing them into opportunity as that's gonna make the circuit a lot easier. And then you can also run over to this area over here. So if you're standing at your frames, you go over there and uh, there's gonna be resources sitting there that spawn into Daviri. You can run over and pick those up. I believe you can only pick them up every so often like they're not going to be able to be picked up every single time otherwise that would be quite busted but uh you can get those every so often and just um yeah additional resources don't complain about it but once you're ready you just go ahead run into the portal and all you have to do is complete the mission that's in here now one thing you can keep your eyes peeled for is these shards and what these shards are going to do whenever you find three of them around the place is they are going to give you a decree and you guys should know what decrees are if you've already played the Daviri Paradox quest. This is the third fragment that's laying around and as you can see once I pick it up I get myself a decree. I can go ahead press I decree and I can choose one of the decrees to help me out and then all I have to do is complete the objective. All right that is the objective completed and as you guys may be seen there I did actually rank up my vault frame you can see here at the bottom the amount of progress that you make. So once this bar is filled up, that'll be tier one completed. I'm not going to do all of it now because I'm going to do this with some of my friends later instead of like doing it all in the one thing because this will take quite some time. It's going to take like at least like an hour and a half to go from uh, level zero all the way to level 10. So that's how much it's going to take in an entire week. You've got an entire week to spend that hour and a half to get from level one to level 10 and on top of that i just unlocked another master rank test so we're gonna go ahead and jump into that right now all right so the master rank 2 test is basically the exact same as the master rank 1 test except you have to kill all the bad guys with your secondary weapon instead of your primary and just like that we're all done with the master rank 2 test so as you guys can see now that we've hit master rank 2 we have access to trading we get an additional loadout slot we've got 500 more daily standing limit one base mod capacity and more void trace storage. Speaking of trading, what you want to do is join a clan as soon as you possibly can. You can join my clan by going into the description below, clicking on my Discord link to join my Discord. Then in my Discord, there is a clan recruitment channel. Type in your in-game name and the platform that you play on. Then you're going to get a message in your inbox, which you can access by pausing the game in your orbiter. Go into communication, then inbox, and you're going to get a message from probably a guy called Clark and you're going to be invited to Eiflin Alpha hashtag 780. The reason that we have Alpha there is because we wanted to do Alpha Bravo Charlie and have multiple clans but uh, everybody took a break from playing so that their plan kind of fell apart so that's just what we're stuck with for now. I don't want to pay the platinum to change it so that's it. You press accept and then once you accept uh, joining the clan what's going to happen is if you go down to your foundry there is going to be a clan key that is added now you want to craft this as soon as you possibly can we need to get more ferrite the resource here which is located on earth lucky us and also polymer bundles which we get from mercury and venus so if we head over to our navigation again and we hover over the venus junction we have to complete the quest size vigil now you can access your quest quite easily from navigation by pressing this x symbol or you can just click on here where it says new quests i like pressing the x because then it shows you basically everything for some reason it doesn't actually show you size vigil here whenever you first put up the game so just go ahead and click on this and it's going to pull you over to the codex and the codex is also where you can view all of your quests as well so this is the quest tab we want to press uh, size vigil and it says we have to complete a bounty in cetus on earth then talk to konzu in cetus on earth so we're going to go ahead go to our navigation go to earth we're going to press on cetus and this is going to take us into our first open world. Once you get into the open world, it might be daytime for you, but you're going to get this yellow marker and we just want to go ahead and jump over to the yellow marker. Or if you're a pro player like me, instead of jumping there, you can pause the game, press fast travel and just press Konzu. You want to talk to Konzu, go to bounties and press prove yourself. And then once that ticks down, you want to run up to this big door, stand in between this uh, 
big door and this other big door. And then you're going to see the Plains of Eidolon for the very first time. So once you get in here, just go ahead and run towards the yellow marker and complete whatever objective that it asks you to complete over there. So for us, all we had to do is kill 25 enemies. So I'm going to go ahead and kill 25 of them. Remember, if you ever get lost or stuck for what to do, just look at the left hand side of your screen in beneath your map. It's going to tell you what the objective is. If you need to find bad guys, the bad guys will be little red markers, so red arrows, and you just have to kill them and then you're done and if it's something specific like an actual objective then it will probably be marked in white or yellow more often yellow than white once you've completed your bounty you just want to come back up to the big door again stand in between the two doors and then you're going to go back in to see this where you can talk to the bob man so as you can see now the little objective marker on our map is white so we want to head over to the white one we want to talk to him and you want to press this uh, sort of X icon where it says a personal favor. And this is going to start the Saya's vigil quest for you. Okay, so once Konzu is done talking, you want to go talk to Saya. And you can find Saya by looking at your mini map and heading towards the white icon again you can press m to make your mini map bigger if you're playing on pc and if you're on console i have no idea what the button is this is saya just go ahead and talk to her and she's going to talk about more lore stuff uh just go ahead and choose any options that come up on the screen that you think are the correct options so here it says konzu's worried about you just go ahead and keep on progressing the conversation as best you can. Just press accept, don't refuse, just accept. Nothing happens if you press refuse, you just have to talk again and press accept. So they're gonna thrust you into a mission in the Plains of Eidolon. We gotta go over here and kill all the bad guys. Once you've killed all the bad guys, you gotta smash this drill by just shooting this part and then you go in to the cave and there's gonna be something down here for us to pick up, which is right here. Okay, so once you've actually got out of that first mission that they send you into and you went through all the dialogue, they're gonna give you codex scanners. So you go to your arsenal then you click on this little gear wheel button up here. You click that, you press gear, you select any of these empty slots and you go ahead and you equip the codex scanners. I'm just going to go ahead and craft them because it hasn't landed in my inventory yet. So well, I didn't craft them. I bought them straight up 500 for 25 and they are now equipped to my gear. So it says that it sends it, but it didn't actually send it to me straight away. I spent the 500 credits. It's no big deal. You can just go ahead and purchase them if you want. But once you do that, you have them equipped. It's going to progress you on to the next step of the size vigil quest. And to start that from your ship, you just go to navigation and you click up here on the top, or you can click this X symbol on the map, or you can click the X symbol up here. And then the picture, I just go ahead and click that bit that says what to do. Okay, so this next part of the quest that requires you to come into this circle that's on the mini map here and you're looking for these glass shards so this is one of the glass shards right here and what you want to do is you want to open your gear wheel so i have to hold q and then i just left click onto this then with the codex scanner you want to go ahead and aim at the glass shard and then hold down left click or whatever your shoot button is and that's going to scan it for you. Now we need to find two more and then we've completed this part of the quest. So from the first glass shard, the second one is in this little vehicle over here. So you want to just come ahead and uh, be outside it. Just aim at the glass shard, hold down left click and there you go. There's scan number two done. And then from the vehicle, those of you who have really good eyes, you'll be able to see the next piece. It is just over here on the left side on top of this box. So again, just aim down sights, hold down left click go ahead and scan it and then that is basically this part of the quest done so i actually ended up getting the codex scanners after i completed the mission they showed up in my inbox maybe they should just add it to your inventory if there's a developer watching this maybe consider just adding it into the player's gear wheel instead of having to send it to the inbox and then the player having to go and equip it and that there type of thing um because this whole like inbox system where they have to get the message then they need to open it for them to receive it it's kind of buggy because the notification for the message didn't pop up for me prior to going into that mission so i had to spend the credits a little bit confusing so maybe a developer who's watching can go ahead and uh change that or fix it or make it a little bit more streamlined once all the characters have finished talking when you're in your ship again just come to navigation go ahead and press board hex galleon or you can press it in the bottom right or the x symbol again and that's going to take you into the next mission so this mission it has you just uh come and find this sort of like mini boss enemy 
We just go ahead and we kill him and he's going to drop the fragment which we need to scan, hopefully. Okay, so the mini boss enemy doesn't actually drop a shard and what you have to do is you have to do a miniature spy mission to get it. So you hack this console and this is one of the vaults that is going to spawn in for spy missions. So it's quite important that you pay attention here because you're going to need to do a lot of spy missions to get different rewards and stuff like that and also get like a lot of XP early. So spy missions are going to have different like things that will detect you. So drones with cameras and laser doors and stuff like that. So in that room, you can see that there's a camera that's attached to the door. And then that door is also going to have like a thing which is going to detect you if you walk through it. But the easy way to do this, to actually just get into this vault without having to deal with any of the complicated stuff, is literally to just jump up here through this door, right? So you can walk up to this wall and you can just hold space bar and then jump over like that. Or you can just do a bullet jump. For the bullet jump up, all you have to do is crouch and then you can look up at the ceiling. So you want to aim up there and then space bar and then you can do another hop to bounce off the banister and then what you want to do is drop down this broken piece of glass over towards where the console would be and the console for the spy mission would be right here but because we have to scan the shard we just go ahead and we bring up our gear wheel we aim at it we left click and there we go now we can exit now you can go out through the sensor door you can just break all the stuff in a spy mission once you've hacked that vault you're good to go like it doesn't matter if you get detected then but um, yeah, we just want to run to the exit now and uh, keep on going on with the quest. Again, once all the characters stop talking, come to your navigation, go ahead and press this and it's going to take you in to the final mission of the Saez Vigil quest. So this is going to be your introduction to Eidolons and these are enemies that we're going to be able to take down very much later. We're not going to be able to kill them right now because we literally just don't have the tools to. And it's this big sort of like dinosaur tree looking combination thing. Some madness and badness combination. One of those things, right? So we just got to hide from him for now. And then after you're hidden from him, you just want to run past him and uh, there's this cave down here. And you'll eventually come across the, uh, the final shard that is in beneath this rock. Even though the other guys were digging for it, they couldn't find it. I'm going to bring out your little scanner. You want to scan him and then the characters are going to start talking again. And then once you complete that mission, that should be that. That should be the Saez Vigil quest completed. And that is going to give you access to a blueprint for the Warframe known as Gara. Now you can get the rest of the component blueprints or Gara from the bounties located on Cetus. And I'll explain what I mean now. So if you come back to the Bob Man on Cetus, go ahead, talk to him, press bounties, and you hover over a bounty, you can see that there are possible rewards. So there's a credit cache, 50 endo, cryotic, grok drill, pressure point. Then the uncommon rewards are the Gara chassis blueprint, hornet strike, stretch, and morphix. If you go to another one, you can see that the Gara Systems Blueprint is on that one, and then the Gara Neuroptics Blueprint is on the third one. So basically, what you gotta do is you gotta play these missions until you get the blueprint uh, for the component, right? And then you take that, you go to your foundry, you craft it, and then you can use the blueprint that you got from the quest to put it all together and get Gara. Now, you don't necessarily have to focus on doing this right now, but what you do need to focus on, if you look up here, it says daily standing cap. Now, the bulb man and all of his people, these are what we call a syndicate, and you have to earn standing or reputation to rank up with them. And at the minute, we're master rank two, we can earn, I think it's like 16,750 standing or something like that per day. So this is a daily thing that you want to do, and you get the standing by running these bounties. Now, obviously, the stronger you get, the higher level bounties you can do. So we could do uh, this uh, level three or tier three bounty, and we could get 2,820 standing per run or because we're quite weak we could do this and uh, get 1500 so doing very many of these doesn't sound too appealing to max out that standing cap so what we want to do is we want to get really strong and then we want to come back and we want to do uh, the higher level bounties so we can get more standing per bounty run but if you want to start making progress early you can definitely do so so what we need to do is we need to earn 5000 standing to rank up to the next rank with the bob man and all of his buddies 
So we're going to need to do like four or five runs off the first tier. And you can do that. Once you've done that, you come back to the Bob Man. You press Austron standing. And it's going to say rank up. You go ahead, you press rank up. And then you're going to have to have these resources and the credits to trade to him to actually progress to the next rank. And you should get these resources simply by playing those bounties but honestly don't worry too much about like maxing out your standing every single day this early on in the game like i said you can get stronger and then come back and do that their stuff later it's just if you want to do that if you want to maximize your progression you can definitely do so as early as now but the next thing that we have to do is we need to rank up a mod to actually complete the next challenge for the venus junction so you come down here to the modding section which is down the ramp and to the left you go ahead you press and then you can pick a mod to rank up now what i recommend is only ranking up mods this early on in the game that uh give you more bonuses on your warframes abilities your weapons damage or elemental damage so for example flow here gives us more energy for our warframe convulsion applies electricity damage to our pistol Continuity gives us ability duration, so it makes our abilities last longer. Intensify makes our abilities stronger. So because I want to go fast with Vault because I like a speed ability, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rank up the Intensify mod. So all I have to do is left click it, press Fusion, and then press this plus symbol once. Then I press Apply Fusion, and that is going to take credits. And it's also going to take a resource known as Endo, which is quite hard to come by, but that's okay. You're going to need to get a lot of it anyway to rank up these mods. But as I said, focus on ranking up mods, which are going to make your abilities more effective. So anything that says ability, strength, range, efficiency, duration, stuff like that, that's what you want to rank up. Any uh, mod that gives you an elemental bonus, so electricity, toxin, heat, cold, etc. And anything which just says plus whatever damage right plus 20 percent damage you don't want to rank up things that give you like plus slash or plus impact or something like that because those are only going to level up certain elements of your weapons so if i give you guys a brief explanation here if we go to the arsenal and if we take a look at our stats here on the scanner you can see that the damage is separated into three different categories so we have impact we have puncture and we have slash and that those numbers added together gives us our total damage here right so there's a few mods in the game which will increase these values separately but what we want to do is we want to increase all of the values right so a mod like pressure point is going to increase all of those values whereas a mod like uh i don't know something that gives us more puncture is only going to increase the puncture stat and it's going to increase it by a tiny amount because the amount of puncture that we have on compared to slash is much much lower right but either way Increasing all three of the stats is better than increasing one of the stats, if that makes sense. Elemental mods fall into a different category because they take your total damage and give you a percentage based off the total damage. So if we throw on Convulsion here, you see that it's going to give us another 8.3. So it's going to give us 16.6 .6 radiation because these two mods combine to make radiation damage. So elemental mods are good because they take the slash, puncture and impact into consideration when giving you bonus elemental damage what i'm going to do here is i'm going to throw additional ranks into intensify because i want that to be even more effective and now i'm going to go ahead and throw that on my vault warframe now what i should do is i should put my intensify mod because it costs eight as you can see in the top right of the mod i should match the shape in my modding uh section here so if i just go ahead and drag that over right here in this blank slot it's costing eight but over here it only costs four because the shape matches so if we come back up the navigation here you can see that we have done everything that we need to do for the venus junction so we're just going to go ahead and click onto this and it's going to load us in now once you're in here just go ahead run forward interact with this and you're going to have to fight a specter now this time we're fighting the vault specter all i'm going to do is cast speed i'm going to walk up to him and i'm going to hold down e so i can melee him a lot and that is going to apply a slash to him and he's going to bleed plus like you know just take damage from me hitting him and then he's gonna die and then we're gonna sit down 
We're going to activate this junction and this is going to give us access to Venus. So as you can see, we now have access to Venus, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. Instead, I want to talk about all the stuff that we just got from the junction there. So we got a Furious Blueprint, we got a Taxon Blueprint, we got Clashing Forest, we got Dreamer's Bond, we got Northwind, we got Stormbringer, we got 500 Salvage, and we got an Orican Reactor. The Orican Reactor is the most important thing, so what you want to do is you want to come to your arsenal, go to your Warframe, press Upgrade, now press Actions down here at the bottom, and go ahead and press Upgrade. Now this is going to install the Orican Reactor onto your frame, and if you pay attention to the top left here at my capacity, what it does is it doubles the capacity. Now that is quite a rare thing to get, it's really nice that the game gives Gives you one quite early on but you got to jump through a lot of different hoops to get one later on and it requires rare resources to craft so you want to be quite uh reserved whenever it comes to just throwing them onto warframes now i'm comfortable throwing it onto vault because i know that i'm going to keep this vault warframe for the entirety of my warframe playthrough if you don't think you're going to do that with the starter frame that you've got save that because you're going to be able to get a better frame quite early anyway so don't worry too much about it and you will be able to get that better frame with the bare minimum. The next thing that we got is what's called an aura mod. Now aura mods give you a bonus to yourself and your squad and they also increase the capacity of your warframe but they can only be applied to this slot up here at the top which has the little triangle uh, sort of hanging from it. You can't put a regular mod in this slot as you can see only the aura mods so what i want you guys to do if you have enough endo for it is actually invest into the dreamers bomb mod because it's just going to give you more options when modding and you can quickly do that from your modding section in your arsenal if you go ahead and you press mods down here that way any mods that you have equipped to your frame are going to show up you just go ahead left click again press fusion and invest the endo if you've got any into it and as you can see it's going to say that it's increasing the drain but because this is giving you more capacity it's actually not draining anything it's just giving you more capacity so they should maybe uh change the wording up here from drain to bonus when it comes to aura mods but as you can see if we back out we've got a little bit more capacity and the effect of this is now greater if you come over to your foundry you're going to see that you got some new blueprints so we got the furious blueprint and we got the taxon blueprint and what we want to do before we log off today is actually get at least the resources that we need to craft the taxon because the taxon is a companion and with this companion you're going to get a mod for him called vacuum which is going to basically allow him to suck up resources for you and if you get this early it's going to make uh, just crafting a lot easier because you're going to have this little guy which is sucking up the resources for you so you don't have to worry about it whenever it comes to playing your missions so if we take a look here we need to get some more uh rubido so rubido drops from earth lua phobos europa pluto Sedna and the Void so that's good we've got Earth we can get it from there and we also need to get Neuros which is a rare resource which we can get from Earth, Lua, Eris and Demo. so if you need to find out where a resource drops from you can go ahead and hover over it here in the foundry on the thing that you want to craft we've got enough Palmer bundle to craft the Taxon but remember we need more Palmer bundle to craft the clan key as well and we want to have that craft in before we log off today another thing you can do if you want to view the resources that a planet drops is you can hover over the planet so here on earth we can just press resource drones we hover over this and we can see that earth drops ferrite ribido neurodes and detonite ampule so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to play the missions here on earth that are flashing blue so i can get some extra resources so i'm just going to go ahead and do that now just not on camera you want to make sure that you're actually running over resources here is an example so i just killed this guy and he dropped a mod you can go ahead and place a waypoint on it and you can see what mod it is before you run over it to pick it up but you can carry as many mods as you want so just pick up every single mod that you see you also want to make sure that you're picking up the resources that they drop the rare resources so the neurodes on our case they're gonna have a green glow every single rare resource has a green glow so anytime you see something like this Make sure to run over it to pick it up until you get vacuum. Once you get vacuum, you can be a little bit lazier with picking up resources because the vacuum is just going to suck it up for you. But if you're really struggling with picking up the resources early game, I recommend just using melee 
because it's going to force you to be right up to the enemies anyway, and the enemies are what's dropping the resources. So if you're just meleeing them to kill them, chances are the resource is going to drop on top of your head. So maybe like if you don't have the best eyesight, or you're just not that good at paying attention to the things that drop, just walk up, melee them, or just walk up and... Uh, shoot them in the face a little bit like this. Here's a common resource, so this is just ferrite that's on the ground, so ferrite and the other common resources are just gonna have that brown glow to them. So if you're playing the likes of a defense mission, this is actually an endless mission, so you can choose to stay on, but it's not worth it to stay on this early on in the game unless the game specifically tells you to. So anytime you get this screen, just go ahead and extract until you get a little bit stronger so you can stay on for longer. You could do it now, it's just not too worth it at the minute. But just from completing two missions, I have enough resources to go ahead and craft my taxon. It's gonna take 24 hours to build. This is our little buddy. We want to have him building as quickly as possible. Now taking a look at the things that I have left to craft, I could go out of my way to get more Neurods for the Furious, but that's not really worth it right now, in my opinion. I'd rather farm this stuff up passively and then craft that later. What I really want to focus on right now is this clan key. So I need to go to Venus to get some polymer bundles. So I'm going to go there next. So here on Venus, the only way that we can go is towards Mercury. So if we hover over that, it says that we need to defeat Jackal at Fusa on Venus, complete 10 waves of defense at Tessera on Venus, and then complete the quest Vox Solaris. So what we're going to do first is we're going to complete Egate and then we're going to move on to Tessera. If you've been following this to a T, what you want to do now is you want to take off this BNF Grenier mod, throw on the BNF Corpus mod, and if you've got it, throw on Stormbringer because we're going to be playing against Corpus and their shields are weak to electric damage. On the Kunai, it's good to take off Heated Charge if you've got that there on, just so you can have Hornet Strike and Convulsion. There is an argument to be made for having both of them on, but uh, just for the sake of simplicity in this guide, just go Hornet Strike and Convulsion just to deal with the shield that enemies. Then on the Scanna, I've got myself a Northwind mod, so I'm just going to go ahead and throw that on, and my build looks a little bit like this. So next up, we have Tessera on Venus, and this is going to take a little bit because I have to do 10 waves. So what I wanted to do to speed it up was actually make my Warframe stronger, but we don't have a lot of Endo right now. I'm going to show you guys a cool little trick to get a lot of endo pretty early on. So as I've been playing, what I've been noticing is I've been getting a lot of the vitality mod. I've got five here. So obviously I wanna have one vitality mod which is going to be ranked up, right? Because every single frame can share the same mod. So all I need to have is one really good vitality mod. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one vitality and I'm gonna put one uh, rank into it by investing 10 endo and 480 free credits. So now what happens is that vitality mod that I just ranked up, it becomes separate from the pile, right? So I've got one that's equipped, one that's ranked up, and four duplicates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the one that's equipped and the four duplicates, and I'm gonna go ahead and dissolve them for endo. It's gonna ask you to confirm what you're doing, and it might even remind you that you do have it equipped on another frame, but uh, as long as you're sure on what you're doing and you make sure that you've got one vitality mod which you've got your ranks into, it's okay. So I can do the same for the likes of pressure point for example. So I go ahead, I take one pressure point mod, go to fusion, put one rank into it, rank it up, and now the other two I can go ahead and dissolve for some endo. And there are also a lot of mods that are straight up just useless. So for example, Trick Mag isn't really worth anything to us right now, and No Return is one of those mods which ranks up only the puncture damage off our weapon, and it doesn't really get to a high enough value to be worth anything to us, so we can go ahead and get rid of that as well for some endo. I don't go crazy with getting rid of everything only go ahead and dissolve it if you know that it's not good or you know that you have duplicates so because i know that i'm going into a defense mission and i know that my vault warframe has an ability which can 
deal a lot of damage to a lot of enemies around him what i want to do is i want to rank up the stretch mod so my abilities reach further so i'm just going to go ahead and try to put as many ranks into this as possible i can only get two so i go ahead i apply then if i go to my armory i already have this equipped i can see that i have plus 22.5 percent ability range and the ability that i care about is discharge and this is going to put the radius up to 24.5 from the original 20 meters that it covers without any mods on. So that's very nice. And what you can do is if you want to see like what the mod does to your abilities. So if we back out of here, we go back in. This is my config B where nothing is on. But if I take the intensify mod, for example, and I look at shock, I can see that it deals 200 damage with nothing on. But if I put intensify on, it increases to 230. Now having it on the matching slot, doesn't increase the damage or anything like that it just reduces the cost of the mod because the ability strength goes from 100 to 115 percent so basically my discharge ability is going to be dealing it more damage more damage per second and it's also going to reach further i could also invest some uh uh, endo into continuity to make the electric effect on the bad guys last a bit, little bit longer too so i went ahead and i put one rank in and then the other thing i'll do is i'll throw on vitality and my build looks a little bit like this so equilibrium so i get more uh, health and energy from all of the drops intensify so my abilities are stronger flow so i can hold more energy enemy sense so i can see the bad guys on the mini map you can swap that for redirection if you want continuity for more duration of my abilities so that affects my two my three and my four vitality for more health stretch for more range on the four and whatnot and then thief's wit just so i can see some loot on the map if i happen to miss it so what i'm going to be keeping in mind as i'm doing tessera is paying attention for those resources because i need at least 300 palmer bundle to be able to craft my clan key so i can go to bed and then whenever i wake up it's going to be done so all i'm going to do in this mission is just run around and press my four as often as i can it does take a lot of energy but all I'm really going to be using is my fourth ability and my second ability. My second ability speed just makes me move a little bit faster so I can move between enemies quicker and also I melee faster. So hopefully the enemies are going to be dropping health orbs or energy orbs so I can keep on using my abilities. And also on top of that you've got the aura mob which is regening your energy as well which is quite nice. You just want to run around and kill and make sure that you're picking up as many resources as you possibly can. So I just completed my fifth wave of the defense. I'm going to go ahead and press this right side here so I can continue and... Uh, do 10 waves for the junction requirement all right so we just completed wave 10 once you complete wave 10 you can go ahead and press the left side to extract but i still haven't got enough palmer bundle to actually build my clan key yet so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna make my way over towards fosa i'm gonna complete as many blue flashing nodes on venus as i can i'm not gonna do the vox solaris quest tonight because i don't want to do that in this play session so i'm gonna avoid going to uh, Fortuna because that's where the Vox Solaris quest takes place and I'm just going to run around and do all of these nodes off camera. So something you want to be looking out for as you're playing like if they're in your way you can get things that are going to drop specific resources so you're going to get things on earth which look like Rubido it's like Rubido ore you can go ahead and break that you're going to get Rubido from it and here on Venus like you have these polymer cases if you break it you're going to get polymer and I got a pretty significant amount of polymer there so there's some rooms off to the side which have these uh cases and containers and whatnot which are going to drop a lot of the resources but those ones that are breakable that drop the resources those are really the only things that are super worth going for and i wouldn't spend too much time like running about the missions looking for those small rooms right like it doesn't make much sense of me to run back towards down this direction because there's nothing really for me back here other than that case and these things here which don't really get me much right like i would have been better spending my time actually going towards the objective so don't get too obsessed with finding those uh like resource packs that are around the place like if they're in the way like those two were amazing great go ahead shoot them pick them up but uh yeah don't don't search every single room just the ones that are sort of like on the way to the objective don't get too sidetracked because if you're playing with a buddy or if you're in a public group and uh you're searching rooms while the other guys are completing the objectives 
maybe they're standing at the exit. You know, they're waiting on you. They're going to be quite mad that you're wasting their time, uh, you know, looking for this stuff. But uh, for this rescue vault, just jump down that vent, jump up this way. There you go. I know I triggered the alarm, but it doesn't really matter because we have so much time. That's an infested enemy. We don't want him. We want to go ahead, hack this guy over here. And uh, like in the previous video, if you get a rescue guy, just go ahead, grab him and then rush to the exit because he's just going to teleport instead of like fighting all the bad guys around. Again, keep your eyes peeled for those polymer cases and whatnot. I don't see any here. But if you go ahead and hold down tab or you press P, you can see how many resources you got. And as you guys can see, I had like 362. Go ahead, hack that so I can get in. I uh, don't see any polymer cases on the way. Still nothing, still nothing. We're just going to go ahead, go to the exit. That's an Eximus enemy. Just go ahead and like melee him until he dies. And uh, we're at the end now. So I'm going to go do next mission. going to start this clan key for crafting. There we go. That's going to be done in 12 hours. And I'm going to complete one more mission for this play session. And it's the spy mission simply because I want to show you guys uh, how to do the spy missions here on Venus. Because spy missions are really good good for leveling up your frame and your weapons early on so what i'm actually gonna do is i'm gonna unequip the kunai and the scanner here because that means all the xp that i get in this mission is gonna go towards my paris and because we're doing spy vaults if you can do them undetected you're gonna get bonus xp and we're just gonna be doing them quite fast if you hack all three of the vaults in a spy mission you're gonna get more rewards than if you only do one so we're gonna go through this and uh, i'll show you guys an efficient and quick way of getting the spy mission done on venus so as you guys can see we have a b and c we're gonna go ahead and head into a here so this one should be easy enough but this one has the lasers sort of coming towards you and all you want to do is jump into these little grooves here to avoid the lasers right so there's another groove in front of me we can let this pass by again Gotta be aware of that laser over there. We jump over here into this script. We go ahead, we jump up the way. We break this script here. Got more lasers. Drop into the vault, avoiding the cameras, and then hack it. There you go. That's the first vault done. Reminder that you only have to do the vaults undetected. You don't actually have to do uh, the entire mission undetected. So this one should be pretty self-explanatory. This one's got the lasers and you just want to wanna avoid the lasers so you can like jump over this one or you can like roll under or whatever. And there's also the vent that can, you know, take your places and stuff like that. But uh, I kind of don't want to risk getting hit by that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it get up. And uh, we're going to, I know that one wasn't as quick and flashy, but I mean, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory that one. It's quite easy. We just hack this and now we move on to C. Right, here we are, the final vault. Now in this one, sometimes there's going to be lasers turn on the floor and you got to press this little console that's in front of you to turn the lasers off. So just keep that in mind if you're playing like a higher level spy mission. Uh, but if you're not playing a high level spy mission, it's just a matter of going up through that vent and then coming into a room until you find the one with the open uh, vent leading into the middle room. And once you get into the middle room, it's a matter of dropping, avoiding the camera, and then turning the, the dials on the little console. And there you go, you did it undetected. And as you can see, we got 32,000 XP on our Paris, and we got a lot of XP for our frame as well. So that's basically that. Now what you can do is you can keep on running the spy missions uh, over and over and over again, because they may drop a component blueprint for the Warframe known as Ivara, and uh, it drops a different one depending on the level of spy mission, right? So here on Venus, uh, it will drop a certain part for Ivara, but it's also going to drop the same uh, part on an Earth spy mission, for example, because they're basically the same level, right? So the first four planets, I think, are all sort of like low level planets, which will drop the same part. So if you get yourself an Ivara uh, blueprint or part blueprint from this, that's really good. If you get a gold mod from doing this, which gives you elemental damage, that's also really good. So I didn't get any of what I was talking about. I just got credits, uh, a poopy mod and a relic, but that's okay because I would be doing this again to level up 
my Warframe and my weapons. I'm not going to spam the spy mission now to level up my Warframe and my weapons, but it would be something I would do just to get my sort of like starter gear to be max rank because it is all relatively close, like a level 26 Volt, a level 23 Paris, level 15 Kunai, and a level 17 Scanner. Like it's kind of like halfway there, everything. So I could just run those spy missions over and over and over again to get some good rewards, to get a lot of XP, implying I got good at running them, but you don't have to do that. That's just something that I would do if you wanted to. You could keep on just progressing through the planets until you got up to the boss and until you're ready to do the Vox Solaris quest. But I am going to leave uh, off this video here. This was a two hour play session for me, more or less exactly. So I got my clan key crafting and I have my taxon crafting. The next time I log in, those will be ready to claim. If I was able to build anything else, I would, but there's nothing else that I'm ready to build. So that's uh, very sad, but it is what it is. And then whenever it comes to uh, this circuit thing over here, I'm going to be doing the circuit stuff sort of like in my own time with my friends and stuff. So there's no rush because I've got a week to do it. But by the end of the week, I will have the Hydro and Optics Blueprint, Cassie's Blueprint, Systems Blueprint, a regular Blueprint, all in my inventory ready to sort of like craft all this stuff you know so i can get my hands on hydroid pretty early so that's gonna be it for episode two if you guys enjoyed hit that like button below subscribe for more warfare content and i'll see you guys in the next one